Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, this is a quick video, as opposed to some of the previous ones that have gone on a bit, shall we say. And it's just really to show um, delivery yesterday, the two large trays that I got specifically for the Deezers. Now these are large, very strong trays, and despite the weight of what will be 16 plants per tray, or is it 20? 4, 8, 12, 6, 20. 20 plants per tray that are obviously kept wet and the water that supports them, they're easily lifted by the handle areas that are reinforced. So these are really strong trays. Now I bought two. Why have I bought two? <laughs> when I change the water, I need to take the plants out to be able to tip the water out and then put them back in. Well, where do I put them when I take them out? Bearing in mind they're dripping wet. They go in the other tray. <laughs> now, there are there is an overspill. I'm just using one of the seed trays for, for those. Um, until we get more plants, which, apart from the one that I still need to divide, possibly two, that's going to increase two pots to the possibility of four. That doesn't warrant filling that tray up with water, if you see what I mean. Because if it's only got a few plants in, it's going to take an awful lot of water to fill it up. Whereas when the trays are full of plants, there's nowhere near as much water needed, because the pots occupy quite a lot of the space. I know the water soaks into the pots, but um, it's still not going to use as much water. So that's the trays that I got. Um, once these last couple of pots are dealt with, that's it until this time next year. There won't be any more splitting, dividing or anything. Everything on the Deesa front becomes static from that point on. I'm hoping that the days are still long enough for actual growth to take place. There does seem to be some good growth going on with some of the smaller areas. These are new growths coming up here. So that things are still growing and I'm hoping they'll push on an amount before the short days start restricting the growth. And the luckily, th luckily the thing with these are the temperature makes no flipping difference. These are cool to cold growers. You know, they, they are used to cool mountain air. So, you know, when my temperature, when my thermostat come November time goes down to 13 degrees, which means it will drop to 12 and come back up to 14. It'll hover between 12 and 14. Um, it doesn't really go down to 12. It's literally, as it drops from 13, to 12.99999 it triggers the heater so it never really gets right down to you know almost 11 if you see what I mean so it'll stay around 13 and that's plenty warm enough for these through the winter but the short days will restrict growth through those winter periods now I've already decided that this large tray of Deesa's and the other one are going to go on the bottom shelf of the Cymbidium staging when it comes in. As a consequence, these two tables can go out. They'll no longer be needed. And the Deesas will have a home on the bottom shelf. Now, I'm always trying to avoid bending, and there will be some bending, but their maintenance is once a week. That's not a big deal. You know, I can manage that. That will be okay. I can literally lift the tray off the bottom shelf onto my workbench and deal with the plants and then put the empty tray with the plants back on the lower shelf, yeah, and fill it up with water. So, the, you know, it's not going to involve lots and lots of mucking about. So that, that's my plan. And with those two tables out of the way, that staging can go here. That, that will be its place alongside here. When I want to get at this shelf and these plants, I can just wheel it across out the way. That also means that the cymbidiums on the top shelf will have plenty of light and there'll be height above them for any spikes, should we get some. <laughs> Crossing me fingers and everything else. And 
all of the cymbidiums won't fit on the top of that staging. Some of them will have to go elsewhere. They're going to go over here on that top shelf. The geraniums are going to be cut right back soon. You know, as the days get shorter and the temperature drops, they won't grow so much. I'm going to cut them right back and they'll go on the floor. Yeah, so they'll go down there. This grid is coming up to this shelf. The only plant that won't fit on that shelf is the phalaenopsis that's in bloom and all the phalaenopsis are going to go out in the kitchen soon, as soon as I've got the shelf organised. Um, I've found somewhere that will get me some decent planed timber, so nice smooth timber that'll look nice, and they'll cut it to size. So I don't have to worry about square edges and saws and all that sort of stuff, I just buy the timber, tell them what I want it cut to, they'll do that, chuck it in the car, bring it home, screw it together. I'm not going to even bother painting it. It's not going to get wet or damaged or dirty or anything. It can stay as just timber. And then it might be that the Phalaenopsis stay out there permanently, but it would pay to do like I did this year and get a reasonable number of the Phalaenopsis out here during the warm spell when I do get 25, 26 degrees out here with the humidity, which will do them the world of good. So, uh, so those are the longer term plans with that grid up here, the Phalaenopsis somewhere else, the Hibiki can come up onto that shelf, my little Pinguiculas can go somewhere. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter too much where they go, they don't get watered that often in the winter because they, they shut down almost. They will do this year with the lower temperature. So uh, yeah, so those are the plans and um, that's the kit. As I said, those, those two trays weren't ridiculously expensive given how sturdy and strong they are. So uh, well worth it. And that will do the job for the Deezers right up till next year when the splitting and repotting will take place again. And I'll still have a tray to put the new pots in when I get them. Yeah, because that, that will serve that for that purpose. And then when I need to take the pots out to empty the water out of the tray, the pots can just go in seed trays. Yeah, rather than buying another one of those just to use once a week. So it's all planned out and it should all work fine. But, um, Blackjack's fully open now. It's uh, looking really good. Um, there isn't much else that's new that you haven't seen. The Victoria Regina buds are pushing on, um, getting some colour so they won't be too long before they open. That'll be a nice, nice little bit of colour when they come out. Um, what else is going on? Not a, certainly not a lot over here. This, I mean, this is one of Hannah's Phalaenopsis. It's a bit of a monster. It's quite a giant plant, but look at the spike. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> I can't remember what the blooms look like on that, but um, that's a big spike. This is the sort of thing, when that goes out on the, in the kitchen, it obviously can't go on the windowsill with a shelf above it because of the spike. And that's the idea of having a, an upper shelf, is to accommodate more plants and to allow for spikes to grow upwards. So the lower, the windowsill underneath the shelf will be for Phalaenopsis that are not in bloom and then the shelf will be for those in bloom. And that will be fine for arching ones as well as ones that grow upright. I mean, if you look at that spike, there's no stake. <laughs> it's just growing straight up and it's incredibly thick and strong. So uh, there we go. Same sort of thing with this one. Bolt upright, no stake required. So oh, that's the uh, dehumidifier coming on. The little humidifier that I brought in for the summer months that can go back down in the shed now. That's not going to get used again this year. So, uh, yeah, um, that makes a bit of room. And the air cleaner, I don't think I'm going to be using that again. So I'll probably take that back down in the shed as well. Um, it's an air purifier. It's got a filter in there and um, and a UV light that sort of, um, you know, kills particles and things, grubles that are in the air basically. And the only other thing we will have coming out soon is this um, odont type, um, that's tiger tail and um, 
the, the blooms are starting to show the patterning so that shouldn't be too long before that opens so that'll be good there isn't um, much else the only other thing that's in bud that hasn't opened yet is the um, phalaenopsis type dendrobium and as I've said before they're nothing spectacular <laughs> don't hold your breath <laughs> mm -hmm. so there we go that's um, that's what's going on um, these little um, phalaenopsis that I bought from Double H um, they've had their spikes cut to allow the um, branches to sort of bloom which they seem to be doing I seem to get a bit of blood blast 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 max won't work here and there that's probably lower temperatures um, if I see a bud that's blasting I always take it off I just have this theory that it could start a trend in the, in the branch you know oh you blasted have you I think I'll do that as well <laughs> And we've got this to look forward to quite soon. Cylogeny, um, uni something or other. No, it's not speciosa. Oh, I can't read my own right. Oh, it's not even writing, is it? Speciosa, yeah. Um, and both of the buds have a follow on. This spike is very strange. As you can see, when the spike's new, it appears as a bud. And then it gets this growth out to the side of the bud and slightly lower down that swells up and swells up and becomes what will be the first flower. The bud that started off is the second flower. That's the sequential part of it and it grows first. And then this bud comes out and opens. Very strange. But that seems to be how it works. And um, there's another cylogeny with um, spikes coming, but um, I don't think I can get at it from here. No, I have to, I have to wait for the spikes to push on a bit. That will be for everything in bloom on the 8th, probably, when I, when I will have to dig it out to show it. <laughs> yeah. There's a bit of Shari Baby catching that morning sun. It's getting to that time of year now when the sun is low enough in the sky that it peeps through gaps in the hedge and that gap there on the end of the wall next to the tree and that lights up things in here it's only for about half an hour but you know it looks good so there we are that's what's going on as far as the changes to the channels um, that's progressing well yesterday I did a new startup video for the garden videos and I did it well I amended the bonsai startup there was nothing wrong with the bonsai startup video um, I, I, you might not understand what I'm getting at I have a video that I edit each time I want to make a video it's what I call my start video so I pull it into the editing software it's got the introduction um, with a space to add a title it's got the music it's got all that it's got the logo going through which will be underneath the video that you know that i'm filming um, so it's a startup video i edited the bonsai one to go back take out roger's garden and bonsai logo and put back in the old roger's bonsai logo and that's all I had to do to that one. I left it as it was. So that one's ready to go. The garden one, I went and found a new sort of video clip as a start-up and an end clip. Put a piece, the same piece of music that goes on my gardening videos, which is the Waltz of the Flowers. Um, found that again. Thought I'd lost it. <laughs> found it again. So I've made a new introduction for that and put the... Um, Roger's new garden logo in yeah now the thumbnails for both of those will be a snapshot of those startups so all I do with the bonsai one is um, I save it to what I want to call the you know the video that's going to go on YouTube so that I don't overwrite the startup and then I edit the beginning which has a, a blank box which just says title here and I just overwrite that with the name of the video and I'll be doing the same with the gardening one 
So all I've got to do is edit that front end and put the title of the video in and then I take a snapshot of that and that becomes the thumbnail for YouTube. My Orchid one, all I've had to do is change the logo. Yeah. So those three new startup videos have been saved away, ready to go. Changing this channel's name is going to take me 20 seconds. There are a couple of places in the YouTube studio where I just create the new name, overtype the old name with the new name and save it and then publish it and it's done. That's it. It's as simple as that. So I'm nearly ready to go. Um, I'm not going to do it now. And what I thought I'd do is if I leave it till next week, then next week, hopefully, I can get both a gardening video and a bonsai video, as well as my orchid videos. The um, Sunday chat has its own startup video, and that's the old one with the old music and the old um, orange and black sort of flame startup. That one stays as it is. All I've actually got to do to that is change the logo. Yeah. So, you know, instead of growing orchids with Roger, it'll go back to the old logo, which just says Roger's Orchids. So the logos will just say, you know, Roger's New Garden, Roger's Bonsai, Roger's Orchids. Those logos will be in the bottom left hand corner of all the videos and the thumbnails. It will be blatantly obvious what sort of video they are. Um, now, quite a few people have given me suggestions for the new channel name, but um, and some people have said, you know, you need to make sure you've got the right words in your channel name so that the YouTube searches will find your channel. YouTube searches don't really work like that. The search algorithm in YouTube is designed specifically to find videos that go with the things you've typed in. Yeah, it also has to think about what you've been watching in the past to see if it can match up with trends and things like that. So, you know, it, it, it's quite a complex algorithm, but the search mechanism within YouTube does tend to find a video or a set of videos that go with the words you put in. So it's the video title that's important for that. The search doesn't really home in on channel names although it can on occasions, but the channel name, if somebody searches like, let's say somebody puts in Paphio Pedalum Care and one of my videos comes up and they choose to go and watch it, at that point they will get to see the channel name and the channel name will say Roger's Orchids Garden and Bonsai. So whereas they were specifically looking for a particular orchid video, they then find out, oh, this channel does gardening and bonsai as well. I think I might subscribe to that. So that's how the mechanism will work. The other thing I wanted to say is um, by the time this video gets posted, this next statement might not be true. My subscribers on this channel is currently sitting at 15,998. Who's going to be the new subscriber that takes me up to 16,000? Come on, you guys. Let's get that number clicked over. And don't forget the old thumbs up, obviously. And I'll see you next time. I just really wanted to sort of show you the plans for the Cymbidiums and the Deezers because, you know, the Deezers are new. There's a lot of plants or a lot of pots and a lot of plants. They take up space. They've got a different maintenance routine and in the not too distant future that large staging with the cymbidiums on is coming back in for the winter right through into probably May, end of May next year. So that's how I plan to accommodate them and um, yeah we do, uh, when we stop on a bit of colour, well I don't always do that because sometimes I forget, but sometimes perhaps we ought to stop on something different but this time I'm going to stop on I've only got two Deezers left in bloom and one of them is already going over see the centers turn black so this is my last Deezer bloom for this year it is representative 
of Deesa Blooms. The triangular shape, the typical hood, the typical veining, that, that's what they look like um, in the main. Lots of different colours and, and styles, but that is the basic shape. Oh, and I forgot, talking of triangles, the Dracuvalia has opened. This is a letter page. It's only just open, so it's not sort of fully flat or anything yet. Yeah, a letter page. So that's just opened as well. And um, I will see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.